Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome to today as we go deeper into God's Word. The sixth day of Hanukkah, two more days after today, and God is going to bring us more revelation as we're looking at the fruits of Holy Spirit, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. As you join in today, be super hopeful and expectant. God is going to encourage and strengthen you. Amen. And I know that a lot of people need encouragement and strength. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Good morning, Kim. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. And as others join in, oh my goodness, God is going to be absolutely amazing. I ask that you don't add to this teaching. You can post things on your wall, but please don't try to jump in and add to this teaching. Amen. Hey, Andrea and Lisa, God bless y'all. Thank you for joining in. We're doing the Fruits of Holy Spirit the sixth day of Hanukkah. Oh my goodness, I'm going to do this every single year with Hanukkah. Oh, we have so loved doing the fruits of Holy Spirit and sharing what's on our heart and how we can be better and how we see Jesus Christ in one another. Hey, Sherry, thank you for joining in. God bless you. And so I'm going to read from Galatians 5, 22 through 23. Hey, Miss Donna. And I'm going to read what the Holy Spirit has put on my heart as far as other scriptures in just a minute. But oh my goodness, you're going to be so glad that you tuned into today. At the effectual door of many adversaries, we enter the kingdom of God through many trials and tribulations. Acts 14, 22. So let's look at verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which his presence within accomplished, is lo love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And so I'm going to read these two scriptures again. And these are the nine fruits of Holy Spirit. And tonight, and you can't really see our, can't, our menorah back there. I'll actually go get it for just a moment. Hold on one second while I go get the menorah. Sorry, here is the menorah. And so this is the shamash, the attendant candle by which we've been lighting all the other candles. And then we're going to put tonight's candle. And tonight we're going to talk about faithfulness of God as well as the gift of faith by the Holy Spirit. And so tonight's candle will be here. Let me put this down. And so we're looking at the fruits of Holy Spirit, and I'm going to read Galatians 5, 22 to 23 one more time. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which his presence within accomplishes, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control against such things there is no law. God bless Joshua. And so we're going to look at today is the fruit of faith. Oh my goodness. When do you need faith? When it's tried and tested. And Holy Spirit told me, oh my goodness, if you've not seen my post this morning, you need to see it. Amen, Dina. <clears throat> you need to see it because truly, 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 there are so many of you that just feel like giving up. You cannot take it one more day. But guess what? The gift of faith is being tried and tested. Amen. First Peter 1, 6 and 7. Be exceedingly glad when you experience fiery trials and tribulations and the testing of your faith, which is more precious than gold, will redound to your praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. You know, so many times we talk about in teachings, ministers, teachers, pastors, talk about testing being the gold being purified in relation to that which is impure coming up to the surface. Well, probably about three weeks ago, God was really talking to me in a whole different manner. And he said, Robin, you know that weapons, swords, 
instruments are forged in the fire. And I said, okay, God, tell me more. He said, as that sword is being made of a metal, a metal material, let's say iron, let's say steel, whatever the blades are being used, you know, you got to put it in the fire and then you got to beat it. And so it's not just focusing on the impurities that are coming up to the surface and needing to be removed from our members, but it's also the area in which God needs to forge us and form us in the fire. Hey, Sherry. And so when we look at the word forge, we're going to see forge with faith. Oh my goodness. I know that you're glad you joined in. I'm glad I joined in. It was a crazy morning. And it's so funny how the gift of faith is being talked about of the Holy Spirit from Galatians 5. It's so funny because every single day that we have been doing the menorah, and here's the menorah again, our big menorah. Oh, it's heavy. Oh my goodness, it's heavy. And so we're going to do this candle tonight for the sixth night. And we're going to talk about the gift of faith, the faithfulness of God, and how God is working on us. And then we, of course, end in prayer. And I know we have all been joy enjoying it at our house. And I pray that you all that have been going along with these particular Hanukkah teachings are enjoying it at your house. And so forge, as we look at faith today, we're looking at forge. And forge is the faith, the opportunity of resurrection in God of eternity. That is the acronym God gave me for forge. Faith's opportunity of resurrection. You feel like it's all dead, but God will resurrect your faith in the God of eternity. Faith's opportunity in resurrection of the God of eternity. That's the acronym for FORGE, is that not amazing? And so it was like one thing after another. It was just so crazy. Yesterday, Rich had a cough starting, and I was like, uh, are you all right? He's, oh, yeah, it's fine. I just got to go in my throat. And then, oh, my goodness, it just got worse through the night. And I had asked him to take cough medicine, or let's look at taking cough medicine. And I didn't have any. Of course, we do apple cider vinegar and all that. But at any rate, he coughed all night long. And so I did not sleep. He did not sleep. And then it was just like one thing after another. This morning, the toilet got stopped up. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And I just wanted to go, ah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was at my wit's end, and it was just so much craziness as, as more and more has been upon my members, and I was just like to the end of my rope almost, and I just wanted to just scream, and of course, we're going to do self-control tomorrow, but we're going to learn the difference between self-control and catharsis and getting things out of your members, amen, and so I was sleep-deprived as well as Rich was sleep-deprived. And I was not in the greatest space because when you're sleep deprived, you might not be in the greatest space because sleep helps to reset the brain as much as the rest of the body. And so my brain needed to be reset, but thanks be to God in Christ Jesus, I did what the Lord told me to do before going to bed last night, which was change my estrogen patch. Thank you, God. <laughs> Because if I had not changed my estrogen patch, I would have been in a really bad space. And I'm just being real, real with you. So you can see that I am just a normal human, human being. I am not a super saint. And God allows me to be transparent to show you what he's doing in my life so that you can be encouraged of what he's doing in your life. That's why I love Peter. And I thank God for Peter because Peter makes me feel normal. How many of you feel that same way? where you thank God for Peter because Peter makes you feel normal. Amen. And so we're looking at faith. Good morning, Kim, being tested and faith is forged by being a weapon forged in the fire, not just first Peter one, six and seven of faith being tested, which is more precious than gold to redound to your praise, glory and honor when Christ Jesus is revealed. And so Jesus is the word. He is the sword of the spirit. Amen. And so when I was at this space 
and I was driving Rich to work, and I was telling Holy Spirit before I got out to drive Rich to work, understand, we do not want to leave this new car at his office. He has an, an office car that he drives at work on the cemetery grounds, and we don't want to park it in the gravel pit by the barn because that's where all the crew, the workmen, the work vehicles, and all that, and that's where our car got wrecked two years ago after we had got it fixed a month earlier from a rear end, and, and it was like $6,000, but we didn't have to pay that. We just paid the deductible, and after we got the car fixed, this was last year. It was last year. Got rear-ended, got it fixed. In January of this year, while our car was parked down where Rich's work vehicle was, it got crunched. And we had, thank goodness, they paid for it, but it was more time out of my schedule. I had to go back. I had to get a rental car and yada, 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 right? And so, you know, that's why I do not we choose not to leave our new vehicle at Rich's work because we do not want it to be carelessly hit. And so I was telling God this morning, I'm like, God, you're going to have to be with me because I'm not in a good space and I want to scream because I'm at the end of my rope. So God, you're going to have to help me drive. And the Holy Spirit came on me for the need and you know, God loves for you to be real, just like Job. And Job, when he was at his wit's end, just like the prophet Jeremiah and Jeremiah 12. And he cursed the day, he wanted to curse the day he had been born. And Jeremiah was at his wit's end. He didn't think he could take it anymore. But you know, when you're at your wit's end, it is not just the impurities coming to the surface, but that's when God is making you a weapon forged in the fire. And we also see this in Zechariah 9. I love Zechariah 9, and especially beginning in verse 12. And I taught verses 12 through 17 at the Princess Warriors Conference that I had at Talladega probably about six or seven years ago at Talladega Speedway. It was amazing. And it was the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. It was Matthew 11, 12 and 13 conference and about being a princess warrior. And you know, there's so many times that you don't realize that God is making you a weapon for it in the fire. I love you, Angela. And so I taught Zechariah 9, 12 through 17 at that conference. And right before I taught it at that conference, I'd had this dream. Okay, I'm just gonna share this dream. And as I was doing that conference, I realized that, oh my goodness, this dream was Zechariah 9, 12 through 17. This was that dream. And so in the dream, there was an attack of the enemy where he was coming against all of our households. And it was this women. It was a group of women that had band together. And this was for the Princess Warriors Conference at the Speed, Talladega Speedway. And all of a sudden, we had weapons all over us. We had uh, knives, swords, all that. And we went into this dark cave and we came out with blood on us and we had just defeated the enemy because we had been done with it and we didn't want to deal with it anymore and i think about at the effectual door of many adversaries and so the word of god in your mouth the sword of the word of truth is faith is being forged in us you know when we think about faith a lot of people think about the shield of faith and I taught on that probably about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. But we're looking at faith forging the weapon of God's word in your mouth. So that you rise up in all authority when you have had it. And you can't take it anymore. Like Jeremiah, that is when God's word comes up in you. As a weapon of mass destruction, Isaiah 54, 16, to come against that tongue of the enemy, verse 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn it. And so God allows that because God knows that greater is Jesus Christ, the word of truth in you than he that is in this world, but sometimes you don't know it, and you think you can't take it anymore. You want to give up. You want to quit. But faith 
forges the weapon of God's word that is a sword in your mouth. Zechariah 9, 12 through 17. Return to the stronghold of security and prosperity, you prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will restore double your former prosperity to you. For I have bent Judah for myself as my bow, filled the bow with Ephraim as my arrow. And I will stir your sons, O Zion, against your sons, O Greece. And I will make you the sword of a mighty man. Woo! And the Lord shall be seen over them. And his arrow shall go forth as the lightning. And the Lord God will blow the trumpet and will go forth in the wind storms of the south. The Lord of hosts shall defend and protect them. And they shall devour and they shall tread on their fallen enemy as on sling stones that, I've, that have missed their aim. And they shall drink of victory, be noisy and turbulent as from wine, and become full like the bowls that catch the sacrificial blood, like the corners of the sacrificial altar. And the Lord their God will save them on that day as the flock of his people, for they shall be as precious jewels of his crown, lifted high, over shining glitteringly upon his land. For how great is God's goodness. Now, remember last night was goodness. Yesterday was goodness. And this is where God's goodness and faith being tested make you a weapon. And as my dream, we come up, came up out of that cave. We were rejoicing. We were celebrating. We were having jubilee. For how great is God's goodness. How great is his beauty and how great he will make Israel's Goodliness. Now, this is pulling from yesterday's Fruit of the Spirit, goodness, where he will make Israel's goodliness great. Amen. And Israel's beauty. Grain shall make the young men thrive and fresh wine the maidens. And so we're going to look at faith, the gift of faith, and we're going to see it in a greater measure as your forge, as the weapon of a mighty man, as it says in Isaiah 9, verse Eight, Ver, oh, sorry, verse 13 and 14, we see the revealing that we are a weapon of the sword. Verse 13, as the sword of a mighty man, oh my goodness, in your weakness, God is strong. In your quit, God breathes a fresh breath of his Holy Spirit. This was where the barren woman was in Isaiah 54. She felt like she couldn't take it no more. She felt forsaken. She felt reproach. She felt that she was worthless. But in that space, God was making her a weapon. Woo! Hallelujah. And this is the gift of faith being revealed today. He was forging her in the fire. Verse 16, Isaiah 54, Amplified Classic. Behold, I have created the smith who blows on the fire of coals and who produces a weapon for its purpose. And I've created the devastator to destroy. And so the reason that verse 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper is because you've become the weapon in God's hand as the sword of a mighty man. You are that weapon that God uses against the powers of darkness. Amen. So let's look at this particular word in Isaiah 54 as we're looking at the weapon of mass destruction that is produced. Amen. Isaiah 54 verse 16, an instrument for his work that I have created. So let's look at the word, the instrument. Usually this has kiss, this has kiss, A, like an instrument as well as a jewel. But let's just go to this. It, well, Kele, Kele, I was close. Kele, Kele means armor. It means to furnish. It means instrument. It means jewel. It means jewel. Look at that. Listen, and it's so funny because in my memories today on Facebook, is a diamond doesn't change under pressure and it still knows its state. And no matter what the value of other people give a diamond, it doesn't change its state. And when you're in the fire being forged by God in faith, 
It doesn't change the value of who God is in you, who Christ is in you. It strengthens it. That's what we're seeing here. So, Kele means armor ap apparatus. It means artillery. It means jewel. It means instrument. It means weapon. It means whatsoever. What do you mean whatsoever? Whatsoever you need. God has brought sufficiency, strength for you to get through. Amen. He won't put on you greater than you can bear, more than you can bear. This from comes from call all, and it means accomplish. It means spend. It means holy reap. It means to finish. It means to fulfill. It means to bring to pass. God will bring to pass his plan for your life. He will strengthen you, but sometimes it requires your faith being tested to where he can make you a weapon in his hand. And I love this because the Hebrew words that compose, the Hebrew letters that compose this, hey, Monica, God's put you on my heart, are cough, which is the palm of a hand, and it means to cover lamed, a cattle goat that looks like a shepherd's staff with a prick in the curvature. It means tongue control and authority. And then a yud, an arm at work, it means works make deed. And so the word picture for instrument, apparatus, jewel, is the covering, who's covering? God, that brings the tongue control. And that's what we're going to look at tomorrow is self-control. That brings control, that brings authority to you and his works. He's going to do his deeds. Amen. When you feel like giving up. Amen. Hebrews 11, 1 through 3, Marguerite. When you feel like giving up, God's word in you is fake. And it calls things that are not as though they are. And that faith is the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things that are hoped for. Woo! Hallelujah. Where you enter a new reality and you wake up to the fear that you've been living in and you say no more. And it's interesting because in my memories today was the personalized tag awoke. You need to wake up. And sometimes all of hell coming against you wakes you up. And you know what? It is all right to feel that you want to scream and you can't take it anymore. Be real. God can handle your realness. But as long as you mask it and you cover it up, you know what? You're not going to be forged into the weapon that God has intended you for because you're just going to pretend and you're going to keep a mask on and you're not going to enter the power of the Holy Spirit. When I got to the place of freedom, of alcoholism, and then shortly thereafter, I didn't know that I had rage in my members of unforgiveness. I was totally clueless to it. You know, I had to be real. I had to be real with God. And when you get delivered, just like the prophets of old, just like Elijah, 1 Kings 19, God, I just want to die. I'm no better than my forefathers. I can't take it anymore. Jeremiah and Jeremiah 12 I, God, I just wish I could curse the day that I was ever born. I can't handle this. Oh, Jeremiah, if you can't handle running with footmen, how are you going to handle running with horses? Let me tell you what. God knows your heart. He knows where you are. You might as well open up and have a conversation with God about it. He's waiting for you to acknowledge it. Amen. Just like this morning when I was at my wit's end. And I was tired. The last thing that I needed was a clogged up toilet that had poop in it. And I was just like, oh God, help me Jesus. Because I just don't want to deal with this today. <laughs> because one thing, dung, Satan's gone and dung it again, was piling on me one thing after another. And I was just like, God, I've had it. And he wants you to be real. And he wants to breathe new life into you where his covering comes over you of his love, of his breath, of his Holy Spirit to strengthen and renew your faith. Paul did this. Second Corinthians 11, Paul was real. 
And he was real about the thorn in verse, in chapter 12, the following chapter. And he's like, God, I can't deal with this anymore. God, take this from me. I can't deal with this anymore. He was having a conversation with God. And God said, what? My grace is sufficient for in your weakness. Woo! Hallelujah. I am strong. Remember, we're doing the word forge for God's faith in us, for the gift of faith, where faith's opportunity of resurrection in the God of eternity, where our faith is being forged as a weapon in the fire. Amen. <clears throat> and so let's look at the next word in Isaiah fifty six sixteen, an instrument for his work that he's created. So this word created is balral. And I think about ha 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 Satan instead of ba ha 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 ba ra 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 ra. <laughs> That's God's laughter against the enemy that brings derision against Satan. Ba ra, you're laughing at me, devil. You think I can't take it anymore? You think I'm done with your dung? Oh ba ra ha ha ha! I'm a weapon that's created. Woo! Hallelujah. And it means to create. It means to choose. When you think that you're not God's choice, guess what? God chooses the foolish to confound the wise. To choose, to dispatch, to do, to make fat. And that's a metaphor for the anointing. It's composed of bet, resh, olive, bet, a tent, tent, household, family, resh, a man's face, head, highest person, and then a leaf, an ox, meaning strength and beginning. And so the word picture for created, ba Satan, ba ha, 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 means the, the house of the most high's strength from the beginning. The house of the most high strength from the beginning. We are the temple of Holy Spirit. We are his house. He brings us strength from eternity into our members when we need it. When we know we need it, we know we need it when we are done. Can't take it anymore, God. I am done. And God says, good. You know your need. You know your weakness. So I'm going to bring a strength from eternity, the beginning, and I'm going to feel you. Woo! Hallelujah. So let's look at the next two letters. He has created, ball raw, the waster to destroy. Now, this is the Isaiah 54 woman. The forsaken woman, she's been made a weapon of destruction. <laughs> the enemy's coming against her. He thinks he has her given up, but he doesn't know. She's become a weapon in God's hand, just like Zechariah 9, 12 through 17, where I will stir up the, you, O Zion, against your sons, O Greece, in that captivity. And I will make my people a weapon, God says. And so this word waster here and also that word jewel in Zechariah 9, I'm almost positive it's the exact word as instrument. So waster means to destroy. It's shachath, to destroy, to waste. It means to, uh, to a spoiler, like spoils of the battle. And so we're looking at shachath, being sheen, jagged teeth, like a jagged W, to consume and devour in the, and to devour. And then chet, 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 meaning it's a chamber as well as a fence. And it means to separate or secret place, the heart. And then tov, it's a cross or an X, meaning sign, seal, mark, and covenant. And so a, a destroyer, creating, that God creates the destroyer, the waster to destroy. This word means you've been consumed by the covenant in the secret place to devour. Woo! Listen to this. You have been consumed by the covenant of God in the secret place to devour, to destroy the works of the enemy. Amen. So the last word that we're going to do, he's created the waster to destroy. The word destroy is chalbal, 
and it means to bind. Woo! The keys of the kingdom. Matthew 16, 16 and 19. The keys of the kingdom. You get sick of the enemy and you bind him. In Jesus' name, because the authority of heaven has risen up in you, the tongue of God, and you speak boldly in faith against the powers of darkness, unafraid. The righteous are as bold as a lion. Amen. So this word, habal, for destroying, means to bind. It means to destroy. It means to travail. It means band. It means to spoil. It means to wreathe in pain. So it's composed of chet, chet, bet, and lamed. We've already done these letters, but let's do them again. Chet, chet, is a fence as well as a chamber to separate and secret place. Bet, a tent, tent, household, family. Lamed, a cattle goad. That looks like a shepherd's staff with a prick in the curvature, meaning tongue, control, and authority. And so the word picture to destroy, are you ready? Separated in the secret place where you've become a house of the tongue and authority of God. Woo! Hallelujah. That is faith, saints. Faith in Greek, pistis, persuasion, belief, friend. It is taking action of your relationship in God. When you feel like quitting, God in you doesn't quit. Holy Spirit in you doesn't quit. Jesus in you doesn't quit. They show up in your house and they destroy the works of the devil. Saints, don't quit. Be excited because God is for you. He's not against you. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I command every lying serpent to be lifted off of your neck in Jesus' name. I take authority over the powers of darkness that are coming against you in your household. And I take the word of God's, the sword of God's word, the spirit of God bringing strength and ability in you to overcome the powers of darkness. And I take the sword of God's word and cut those cords and command that darkness to loose you and to go into the wilderness in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And I pray the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom. And I pray that you are that Zechariah 9, 12 through 17 weapon of God in the stronghold of his hope. And you're going to be shouting the victory as you are Isaiah 54, 16 and 17, a weapon created to destroy the destroyer and that no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you condemn it for that is the inheritance of the righteous ones in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Have an amazing day.